Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be going to another Earth-like planet that has been recently discovered in April of 2017. We're going to be talking about LHS-1140b. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So this has actually been a pretty good year for discovering various exoplanets, but also Earth-like planets. And we're going to go and take a look at yet another one in the habitable zone of a nearby star. Now this is Sun right here. And if we zoom out, we'll actually get to see some of the other nearby stars around us. Uh, these are the nearest 100 stars. But unfortunately, the star I'm going to be taking a look at is not actually present here, unfortunately. The um, star is relatively newly found, and so is the exoplanet. And it's actually a red dwarf. It's a type of a star that is the most common star in our um, galaxy. And this one here, we're going to kind of place manually at a distance of about 39 light years away from the sun. So there it is. Uh, there are some of the closer stars for comparison, like for example, if you want to find Alpha Centauri and Proxima Centauri, they're only about 4 light years away. So this is about 10 times as far. So this red dwarf is interesting for many reasons. So first of all, it's about 15% the mass of Sun. Um, and because it's a red dwarf, it's very likely that any object orbiting around it is probably in... Um, tidal lock with basically with the star so in other words if there is a planet orbiting around here it's probably tidally locked to that star and so the same face always faces the star and the other side is always cold so that's possibility number one and uh, for most of the red dwarfs we think all of the planetary bodies are probably in tidally lock the other thing about uh, this particular red dwarf that is um, slightly different from from the red dwarf we've observed so far is that it's not very active. It doesn't seem to have any flares or we haven't really observed any flares on it. Most of the red dwarfs are very, very active. And because of this activity, any kind of an atmosphere that might be present on an orbiting planet would be stripped away, including any possibility for liquid water as well. But because this is a less active star, there's a very high chance for an atmosphere and possibly even liquid water. But in this case, it's actually evaporating really quickly because I don't have any magnetosphere and also the temperature here is a little bit too high. So this is uh, just the basics about the star, but let's actually now erase this Mercury that I placed here and place the actual planet that we've discovered. And this planet is known as LHS1140b. And so we're going to actually recreate this from scratch just so you get an idea of what this planet looks like. So first of all, it's very likely tidally locked, which is, once again, same uh, side always faces the star. But interestingly, it's sort of square in the middle of the habitable zone, which also suggests that there's a possibility for liquid water on the uh, darker or the twilight um, area right here. Let me just disable the labels here for a second. Uh, so right here, there might be some liquid water, but we, we won't really know for a while until we can actually observe this with uh, more sensitive telescopes in the future. The interesting thing about this particular planet is that it's about 6.6 .6 masses of our own Earth, and it's also only about 1.4 radii of Earth. So in other words, it's actually very, very, very dense. As a matter of fact, it's 2.3 times as dense as our planet Earth. And this creates a lot of interesting ideas here, or basically allows us to possibly study a lot of interesting ideas about exoplanets in the future. So first of all, if we are able to detect the atmosphere around this planet, we'll, we'll be able to kind of see how the density of the planet affects the atmosphere. We'll also might be able to predict um, how density affects the magnetosphere. Because it's so dense, it's very likely that there's a lot of iron here. This is just not enough here. We might have to place more. Um, and something else is making this planet extremely dense. Basically, the reason it's so small is because some kind of a really dense metal and uh, high gravity is causing it to become really, really, really condensed compared to some of the other planets of the same mass. Now, this might suggest that there's actually um, a relatively thick atmosphere here as well. 
but uh, because it's so dense, it's not going to be very high up. It's actually going to be a lot closer to the ground because of the much higher gravity. And the gravity here, the surface gravity here, is uh, more than three times higher than, um, than planet Earth and is even higher than on the planet Jupiter. So because of the density, once again, this is an extremely uh, interesting world to explore. The other thing about this uh, particular planet that's sort of interesting is that it receives about 46% more sunlight, um, which suggests that uh, the temperature here is probably going to be really, really high. We'll see how high it goes in a few minutes, but it's very likely going to be much higher than the temperature on Earth. And we're actually going to increase uh, the amount of water here and see what happens to this planet after a few days. And it looks like we might be reaching an average temperature of about 8 degrees Celsius, which is going to be actually really comfortable. A very interesting, very comfortable planet to live on. And you can see there's already clouds in the air, there's going to be liquid water here any second, and it's getting to actually... Yeah, it's, it's looking very terraformed almost. Wow, this is amazing. Anyway, so, moving on. What else do we know about this and what have we discovered and why is it so interesting? Well, so, one of the more important things is that this is actually definitely a rocky planet and uh, this is probably one of the densest planets we've discovered so far if not the densest uh, we've discovered a few planets that are more massive but um, we're not really sure if they're so-called super earths this is definitely a super earth but it's also a terrestrial super earth uh, with a mass basically 6.6 .6 times bigger than earth which usually suggests that these planets would be gas giants but this is a rocky planet and it's extremely extremely dense so we definitely need to examine a few things about this planet, and in 2018, when um, James Webb Telescope launches, this will very likely be one of the first objects we'll be looking at, because we want to see its um, atmospheric composition, we want to see how big the atmosphere is, and we also want to see um, what kind of a composition it might actually have on the inside. But one of the reasons this is going to be one of the first objects is because it just so happens that, completely by accident, this planet actually passes right in front of its star every time it orbits around it every 25 days. So, because we're looking at this um, star and this planet from our planet Earth, we actually get to see it pass right in front of it once in a while. And because of this, we can actually see or use the, um, the refraction of the light that you kind of see in the corner there to not only see the thickness of the atmosphere, but to also see the composition based on the type of light that is absorbed by the atmosphere. So once James Webb's telescope is in the air and is looking at these planets, we'll be able to know practically everything about the atmospheric composition of LHS 1140b. And if we are actually able to find thick atmosphere here, or possibly even liquid water, this means that there's definitely other planets like it out there that we can just, you know, send probes to and hopefully find these wonderful terraformed worlds where we can possibly live in the future. Now, right now, uh, even though I basically created this planet based on the parameters that um, were provided by NASA, I seem to have created a perfectly livable world. I didn't actually expect that. I thought it would be a little bit too hot. Turns out it's not. The temperature is about 8 degrees Celsius. It's a little bit colder than Earth, but um, really the biggest problem here is that this is probably tidally locked. It's probably going to be very hot on one side and very cold on the other. But the twilight area where, you know, it's between the darkness and the light, so basically right right here sort of on the, um, on the side, might actually be perfect for us. As long as there is atmosphere and as long as there is some water. But... Despite this star being so inactive and despite the fact that we didn't detect any flares, there's still a chance that maybe a long time ago it was active, like you just saw a flare happening right now. Maybe it did have those flares and maybe it did actually strip this planet of atmosphere completely, meaning that maybe, just maybe, this planet actually has no atmosphere and kind of looks like this, which also means that all of this liquid water is going to first freeze and then evaporate because the sun will bombard it and um, will basically break it apart into hydrogen and oxygen. And because this planet is so dense and has such a high gravity, it's very likely that hydrogen and oxygen will just kind of stay 
um, and combined with other elements, creating very likely some kind of a reddish color if the oxygen combines with metal. And hydrogen might create some kind of a methane-like molecule or something else that is quite common in our solar system as well. So for all we know, maybe this is a dead planet and there's nothing on it. And anyway, so once we discover more about LHS 1140b, and once we give it a cool name, I'll talk a little bit more about this planet and discuss uh, some of the repercussions and some of the possible findings that might occur in the next feature. But for now, that's all I wanted to do, and hopefully you learned something from this video. And anyway, let's actually maybe come closer to this planet and put Earth next to it just to see what, uh, what it looks like. And also maybe, just maybe, I'll slow down time a little bit more and see what happens when, oh wow. That not exactly what I wanted to do. Earth just destroyed LHS 1140B. It completely obliterated it. I don't really know why. Well, that was cool. Anyway, bye guys.